All right, g'day, Mike here. I am gonna show you around my dugout canoe. So this is the canoe that I've spent the last, well, really 14 months building. Uh, I've got another specific video all about that. It's a canoe I'm gonna use in the next few days to launch on my Surviving the Great Barrier Reef expedition where I'm placing myself in the historic predicament of a shipwrecked sailor who I'm hypothesizing could have built a dugout canoe with the tools that he had from his shipwreck in this exact location uh, on Cape Cleveland up in uh, Queensland, just south of Townsville, to escape to a rescue haven up on the tip of Cape York, a journey of about 1,500 kilometres. So the purpose of this video is just to literally show you around how the canoe works and its features. So let's start from the front. All right, so the four-ton Norfolk pine log is uh, had the sides shaped in a fair bit so it'll sit sort of deep in the water and that'll reduce the leeway as I cruise through the water. It's fairly flat on the bottom that way if I'm bouncing up and down on a coral reef it's less likely to damage the bottom there's a bit more you can sort of sit a bit flatter on the sand. Uh, the bow here this stake through the nose is what I can tie anchors to or uh, other things like a sea anchor which I've got on the top. I built the bow up a fair bit so it can punch through seas and particularly when I'm if I plow into the back of a wave when I'm sailing downwind. So up up on top here um, anchor anchor rope underneath this is a sea anchor uh, on the bow which I can chuck out and it like a big parachute will um, swing the bow into the seas so that's for emergency situations or perhaps when I'm using uh, doing a sail change and because I'm this is a single-handed uh, operation here uh, a lot of the time I've really got to do things in separate steps, break them down because you can't do many things at once uh, when there's just one of you. This little platform here uh, can act as a bit of a standing point but it's also the attachment point for my main sail which is a crab claw, big triangular sail and it hinges off this point here and the triangle um, heads up sort of like an upside down triangle pointing to the bow of the boat. I'll, do, I'll show the inside and the hatches and stuff uh, on the second pass around. All right, so it's got two outriggers and there's a reasonable size platform in between. So the shipwreck survivor had uh, planks and stuff that were from the raft that they made from their ship. So that's what I've, I'm saying these are. And that's also where at night time I can place my gear, uh, particularly my camera gear and stuff. So it's a nice solid platform um, that stuff won't fall through when I'm particularly preparing my film and uh, transferring footage and stuff at the end of the day. Just There's just two bamboo poles uh, holding that there. This is a sail rest, which I use to prop up the triangular sail. This here is just a spare um, spar for the sails, but it's also acting, I've tied these on here, and these are, these are my spears. Um, seal there with native beeswax. That's a pretty nasty sharp uh, thing there, a three pronged spear. So it's nice that that's seated away safely in, um, in a container. So in the heat of the moment, I don't stab myself. Uh, there's the two sails. Here's the longest sail, the crab claw. And this is the smaller sail, which behaves a little bit more like a catamaran sail. And it is mounted off the um, front cross beam there using a detachable method. There's the outriggers. Uh, since I've built it, I've just sharpened the noses off and stuff just to reduce the drag a bit. I replaced all of these um, stakes because I just felt they weren't strong enough when I, just that's the feeling I had when I was on the open ocean. I felt they needed to be thicker. And spare spear shafts. Uh, this is the bottom of the sail rest. This, this um, rests into holes that I've put in the top of the canoe here. So, See these little holes there, I can basically push it up and, until it sits nice and neatly in a hole. I've also got grab handles uh, on the top of the, the sides here. This will normally be covered in solar panels which I use to charge my camera equipment and also um, a battery which can operate a sort of an emergency electric engine uh, which I'll chat a bit about in a second. Alright, back here we have the rudder. This took a lot of work to sort of figure out how to do but I'm reasonably happy with it. So it basically, um, it's, well it's not moving now because I've locked it off with my, <laughs> you call this my very primitive autopilot. So this is an autopilot so um, I can move the rudder left and right with a fair bit of friction. But if I want to lock the rudder off in a certain point, I pull this down, it increases the friction and now the rudder can't move. But, and I can release that quickly 
if I need to. So once again, I'm single-handed here. So if I need to run up the front and put a sail up, it's nice to be able to lock the rudder into position. So the tiller arm pivots like that, and it can come all the way around the back here. So when I pull it off, um, I can spin it around right like that. <clears throat> and so the rudder just operates like a normal rudder. It's a fairly decent amount of surface area. It's held on here by a very strong rope with two weak points of string sewn into it like that. So if I hit a reef, the force will snap these strings and it can come up, but the stronger rope is still holding it in place. So I won't lose the rudder. I'll just have all the components just hanging off the back there. Uh, these are camera mounts uh, that I've put in here. And same with all these other little holes. These are designed, I'll do a separate video about the modern equipment I'm taking, including the camera gear. But these little holes that you see all around the canoe, are so I can shove this in wherever I want, and that pole extends out to double the length, three meters, so I can get any camera angle pointing back at the canoe um, that I please. Uh, at the back here, this is like another, it's like a mini sea anchor, it's a drogue, so I can throw it out and it will slow my progress forward, but it's still allowing me to move forward. So if I've got big seas from the back and I feel like I'm about to slide down the face of a wave really fast and then collide into the back of the, other, the next wave, that can slow me down. And I've made it so it's fairly adjustable, so I can fine tune how much drag it provides, so it's just, just the right amount. Uh, this, is, uh, this is actually steel, well, um, galvanized iron. That's the mount for the emergency engine. So that's just an extra level of safety. I'm doing this in a modern era. And, you know, I was probably erring a bit too much on the side of being traditional. Uh, and I think there's too much risk that I'm gonna require assistance, perhaps. So just that little extra buffer of safety, if I need to just get up wind to avoid being smashed on a reef, is kind of, you know, responsible adventuring. Um, it's kind of, I sort of feel I need to, otherwise I'm gonna be, you know, a little bit too exposed to perhaps putting other people out to come and look for me and also help really just ensure the overall success of the expedition. And also, because I'm making a film, it means I can sail past a point and then motor up, uh, put a camera down, motor back up wind, and then take a picture of myself um, sailing past. So it's not going to, uh, I'm not going to be motoring all the way to Cape York. It's only got an hour's worth of battery, this thing, and then takes days to, to, to recharge. But that little, um, there's going to be a couple of little side benefits uh, having this little electric engine. <coughs> all right, so um, more holes here. Uh, these bigger holes here, I can, I've got bamboo sticks that come up and I've got an awning that goes over the top for when I'm camping. These are more camera mounts. Uh, these ones, I'm hoping I can put the GoPros underwater to film back, back up at the canoe as it sails over the reef. Well, that's the plan anyway. Uh, more holes like this, which I can throw my GoPro pole into. That's another sail rest sitting on top there and another piece of spare bamboo. I've basically got lots of spare stuff because uh, I'll probably have to improvise stuff when it breaks at sea. All right, I'm just gonna jump up on top and undo the hatches. In fact, I'll use the GoPro on a mount for that. Um, and uh, then I'll show you around the inside. All right, this is the front hatch. They're all latchable. And I can open it up and hold it in position with a little knocking point there. Right, this is the center hatch. So looking in at the back, this is um, a seat. I've actually, the, the awning that I used just to keep the sun off, I put on this to give myself, um, you know, something softer to sit on. This is removable so I can fit my largest case, my waterproof camera gear case in there if I need to. That's the reason that that's not fixed. Um, underneath I've got two shelves. My drone, um, these are sized exactly to fit my drone. There's another piece of camera gear I keep at the back there. This one's for uh, some of the hand lines that I've got. Um, there's some fishing gear in that uh, rusty tin there. And I've got another camera that sits there. And that's a bailing bucket. Behind that, I've got some vinegar. That's an emergency first aid for box jellyfish at Irukandji's. 
Um, I've got some pockets on the side. This is a waterproof dry bag that I can chuck uh, my drone in if I need to go for just a quick recce ashore and film something. Other pocket, that's actually a fish identification chart in case I forget what's the legal size for fish because I'm doing everything legally. There's a lot of rules to comply with out here on the Barrier Reef, which is fine by me because um, it helps conserve the place. Um, spare ropes, which I can just grab at any time. Uh, sponge for mopping up the bottom. This um, has makeup removal pads, uh, not for my makeup. <laughs> that's so I can dry uh, or clean the camera lens really quickly. And I've got a little spray bottle here uh, of water which I can just squirt on my GoPro lens or whatever and then um, clean off with one of those and they're cotton so they're biodegradable so if I drop it in the ocean accidentally it's not going to um, be a big deal. Uh, this is my Woomera for spearing um, my dinner. Everything's got a place. It's a small canoe I'm living on it for months so everything has a place and um, it's got to be efficient. These are the tie-off points for the stays for the sail. So these are the, the stays and there's basically one set of stays and I have to retie them for the sails. So um, one knot there indicates that's the port side tie-on point for the sail and I've got the exact opposite on the other side. I've got four knots, one, two, three, four because there's different angles different sails and I can basically go put them on a symmetrical setting so I know that as a start point they're going to be the same length when I put the sail up. Right uh, this is a compass so the shipwreck survivor had uh, compass and charts and a sextant so that's just something which you know looks kind of like an old compass brass like they have on uh, ships back in the day and it um, can handle a little bit of motion from the boat. Uh, I've got some little points here just to guide the wires from my solar panels in through the holes here and then into the actual canoe itself. Uh, I haven't really finished the bottom off a great deal, I just basically didn't have time and it also helps people to realise that this really is a dugout canoe. These are patches from borer holes um, of this is native beeswax that's in there and it works remarkably well. When I first launched it in the water, a little bit of water comes in and the wood swells up um, around those beeswax um, mends and it um, stays pretty dry. I've got some little tie points here, these are for seats and for my hammock which is because I'm planning on living aboard this thing a lot because it's difficult to, to camp ashore um, on the ocean. Uh, it's, it's a long story but the ability to live aboard um, reduces a whole amount of stress and uh, chance of failure if your canoe drifts away on you in the middle of the night. So this thing doubles as a, a stretcher slash hammock. I've got another hammock that goes in between uh, the two poles as well. So I've sort of got double. And these poles um, act as awning sort of structure. And also on shore, I can turn them into a camp chair so I can sit around the fire and not um, be uh, just sitting on the ground, which is not a requirement, but little comforts like this help you be happy and survive and not really hate life. All right, let's have a look at the front. Um, Alright, that's a water barrel I've got in the front there. I haven't uh, filled it up yet, but that's 20 litres. The shipwreck survivor had a small barrel like that. Uh, more holes in the front there. And I put a, um, a little bulkhead there. That's just so I can throw coconuts and other bush tucker in there and not have stuff rolling all around the canoe. So it sort of is a big space, but it's also a pretty small space in the big scheme of things when you think how much equipment I've got, not just the filming stuff, but the historic equipment as well. So uh, I'll make, I'll put the links to uh, another video about the historic equipment I'm taking and all the food that I've prepared, the bush tucker and dried kangaroo meat and native ginger and native honey and all that stuff. And then a separate video for the camera gear and modern equipment that I'm taking. Please make sure to subscribe because you're going to see lots of epic videos as I take this canoe all the way up to the tip of Cape York, living off the land and the sea. Um, it's going to be an adventure. So uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching.